I'm writer and historian Jennifer Sopko, coming to you from Venango County, Pennsylvania, right in the heart of Pennsylvania's historic oil region, where for about a quarter century, Monarch Park delighted and entertained folks traveling by trolley to this former amusement park located between Oil City and Franklin. Oil entrepreneur John B. Smithman established what was originally known as Smithman Park in 1896 for the Oil City Street Railway Company, an electric streetcar line he had chartered about a decade before. The 60-acre park was located in Cranberry Township in the midst of the active commercial oil industry that had exploded in northwestern Pennsylvania in the 1850s. In 1901, the competing Citizens Traction Company bought Smithman Park for $50,000, an equivalent of more than $1.7 million today, as well as Smithman's Oil City Trolley Line. And it began absorbing and consolidating the electric streetcar franchises around Franklin and Oil City. The park's name was changed to Monarch Park, as Monarch was the maiden name of Citizens Traction Company owner Dan Geary's second wife, Ann Ehrman Monarch. Citizens Traction formed the Monarch Park Hotel Company to operate the park and began further developing Smithman's scenic spot. Monarch Park thrived during the golden age of trolley parks in western Pennsylvania, where during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, dozens of picnic rows and amusement parks sprung up along electric streetcar lines. They were designed to boost passenger business on these trolley lines. The tracks of the streetcar line that brought open air trolleys filled with passengers is located behind me roughly to the right of the access road and I'm generally following the path of those trolley tracks, which terminated in a loop at the station at Monarch Park. And that was a very wide station. Uh, when folks arrived at Monarch Park, they disembarked and entered. And when they got to the other side, they saw all the wonderful attractions that were offered at the park. The pond behind me generally marks the location of one of Monarch Park's most popular attractions, the carousel. Monarch Park actually had two carousels during its operation. The first was a Herschel Spillman stationary track machine. That merry-go-round was replaced in 1915 by a dental company number 106, a three-row menagerie carousel. This grand and beautiful carousel not only featured jumping horses, but also a variety of carved wooden animals. This tree marks the spot of the electric tower, and some of the structure's foundation can even be seen today. This impressive building no doubt attracted many visitors to Monarch Park, and the numerous multicolored lights lit the park after dark. Picturesque and peaceful, the forested Monarch Park offered shaded picnic areas and several mineral springs that thirsty picnickers could use to fill their tin cups. One of those mineral springs can still be seen today. Behind me is roughly the location of Monarch Park's one and only roller coaster dubbed the Thriller, which debuted in 1913. The $25,000 ride, reported to be covered in hundreds of lights, was built by the Ingersoll Construction Company of Pittsburgh and designed by famed engineer John Miller, who is credited for developing more than 100 roller coaster related patents. Monarch Park's flower gardens could be found beyond the Whirlpool ride. Guests could also try their luck at a row of novelty booths known as the Great White Way, which included such games as Make Mod Kick, the Parisian Dart Game, Fish Pond, and a shooting gallery. For one July 4th celebration, the park even advertised an African Dodger game an indication of the racism and discriminatory practices of that time that were also present at amusement parks.
The park had an intricate flower garden, plus several rustic footbridges that spanned Two Mile Run, which flowed through the grounds and eventually into the Allegheny River. These bridges were beautiful examples of the twig architecture that was popular during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, a style that involved unstripped and intertwined twigs, branches, and logs. Behind me is the approximate location of Monarch Park's two-story dance hall, also called the auditorium, and couples would swoon and sway across the polished hardwood floor. Entertainment offered at the park included acrobats, balloonists, and lectures, including one in 1903 from temperance advocate Carrie A. Nation, who was infamous for smashing up bars with a hatchet as she campaigned against the ills of alcohol. There are a few clues that indicate where Monarch Park's dance hall was located, including some of the Barnstone Foundation, as well as one of the trees that used to stand at the building's entrance, but which is now sadly fallen. Ice cream, soft drinks, and chicken and waffle suppers were available at the two-story Monarch Park Cafe and Restaurant. Today, remnants of the restaurant building, including some bricks and part of the Barnstone Foundation, as well as part of the restaurant safe, can still be found hidden in the woods. To my left was generally where the bandstand was located, and it was another live music venue at Monarch Park. Visitors could catch local orchestras and bands, such as the Northwestern Band and Orchestra from Meadville. Monarch Park also featured a children's playground with a double slide and swings, an amusement parlor that was converted into a bowling alley building, a steam-powered miniature railroad, a Ferris wheel, and a miniature zoo with bear, monkey, and birdhouse. Groups could also use the large kitchen pavilion that was equipped with gas ranges for their outings, from churches and Sunday school gatherings to family reunions and company picnics. Thousands of people were reported at the park on holidays and special event days, carried there by open-air streetcars all summer. After World War I, Monarch Park saw years of declining attendance, thanks to the increasing popularity of the automobile. Trolley access would also be hampered to the park by an ice gorge that destroyed the double-decker Big Rock Bridge near Franklin. Citizens Traction Company leased the park to an outside firm for a couple of seasons and then put Monarch Park up for sale in 1926, also discontinuing trolley service between Oil City and Franklin that same year. Monarch Park soon closed for good, although gatherings likely continued there for a little while afterwards. Ownership of Monarch Park passed to the Keystone Public Service Company, then the Pittsburgh Conference of the Evangelical Church, which desired but failed to develop the land into a religious and educational center with cottages and campgrounds. The old park property was eventually purchased more than a decade later by the Oil City chapter of the Isaac Walton League of America in 1939. Now known as Waltonian Park, the site is currently owned by the Waltonian Park Association and leased back to the Isaac Walton League, a conservation organization that promotes outdoor sports like hunting, fishing, shooting, and archery. Today's Waltonian Park has a common area that's available to the public during daylight hours. Only a few traces of the former Monarch Park Amusement Park can be found hidden throughout its grounds.